Welcome, Claire. Nice to see you. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to dive right into this. Uh, I always like to start off these calls with me rearranging my chair as uncomfortably as possible. Uh, yeah. I thought we'd just dive right in and, and let the folks at home, let the students know, how do we know each other? Uh, Sam, we know each other because I think you were my facilitator at three of my weekend work weekend workshops when I was doing the CPA PEP program. Wow. I, I, I vividly know. recall the first one and I, I feel like I remember the last one. And then we must have thrown in one for good measure in between. I think there was one somewhere in the middle as well. I can't remember which one it was. I vividly remember the first one most, I think. Hmm. Mm. And why is that? Is it um, like what is so special about not like about the first PEP module? So that it's the first PEP module. It's the orientation workshop weekend. You are day one, week one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like I think. Yeah, it is. And for no, I don't know if it was. I think it was a bit like, yeah, this would be OK. This would be fine. And then all of a sudden, like. Oh, my goodness me, what? am I going to get into? And then you do the second weekend, like halfway through call one. And I feel like you get stripped bare and you, you, you're back to that stage where you're like, do I actually know anything at all? Like, yeah, it tests you. It really does. So I think that's why call one sticks in your memory so much. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you certainly made an impression because, you know, you were, you were prepared and you were ready to put in the work and yeah. wanted, wanted the information. We're ready to say, okay, how do I make this all work? Because, yeah. you know, a little bit about yourself, um, because I don't think it's obvious to people at home, but you yeah. did not come into this, uh, right after university, you, you have a bit of a backstory. Oh. So tell us about what happened and what led you to coming to Core One um, when we first met. Yeah, absolutely. No, I didn't come in straight from university. I came in kind of mid 30s, probably, you know, 15, 16 years after I'd done an accountancy and law degree. I had, I started my career kind of in hotels as a junior accountant. Um, and kind of dabbled in different industries. I did a bit in oil and gas, and this was all back in the UK before falling into nonprofit. Um, and at that point in nonprofit in the UK, I started look, looking at doing um, SEMA, which is their Chartered, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, and just found the program difficult and not user friendly. I'm going to be honest, and I don't know what it's like now. They gave you a manual and said, there you go, read it, <laughs> learn it, come and take an exam. And it terrified me. And then I moved to Canada and thought, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to do the designation piece because it had, I didn't think I was capable of it. And then I had a manager who was my mentor. He actually was my CPA mentor, one of my supervisors in my profession practical experience program that said to me you're you're a really good accountant and if you don't do this this is where it stops for you like this is I was a senior accountant at the time he was like this is it you you're not going to go on in non-profit and do strategy you're not going to go beyond where you are now because unfortunately as good as you are non-profit boards like those letters and it was at that point that I thought I, I'm going to have to do this Right at that time, I had one child who was, I think he was about 18 months old. And so I applied to CPA Canada only to be told that because my degree was over 10 years old, I had to go and do six of the prep programs as well. So I just started it and did it. So I did all the prep programs, which I now say I think was a blessing in disguise because it refreshed my knowledge from way back when. Um, and got me ready for the PEP program. And then somewhere in the middle there, I had another child and it took a good few years. But yeah, so that's what led me to it. So what's interesting is, and just so that people are listening, the uh, prep um, courses are equivalent to like the university undergrad. They're, you know, they can be for somebody who say majored in economics, but didn't 
uh, do their accounting electives, uh, or, you know, for somebody who it was a few years ago, and they yeah. need the refresher. So I'm really happy for you to kind of share that because, you know, it's not, oh, crap, you didn't pick the right, you know, the right thing, or you didn't no. do it right away. It's like, no, 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 there's time. And you were living your best life yeah. and you were progressing in your career. And then you hit a reason to, to invest the time yeah. and to make the change or yeah. the next absolutely. evolution really. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. So that's really great. So you walk into core one orientation workshop and I remember yeah. you saying, or you having conversation with people at your table and just concerned about time. Uh, and you know, just saying, well, like I have two children and, you know, how am I going to get this done? And then we had an honest conversation because more time is, is not necessarily a good thing. And people don't always use their time really well. Um, no. So it can actually be, and it's been my experience that people who have constraints on their time, whether it is family, whether it is you know, competitive athletes, just people who have other things going on are forced yeah. to dial in and take it seriously and make the hours they have count. So, um, so it's inspiring, like it's inspiring to me, you know, because it's, you know, it's, you made it work and, you know, we revisited and we got to touch base, um, throughout the modules. And then again, um, right at the end. And so you wrote and passed that would have been, um, that was the 2019, correct? Uh, yes, yes, it was 2019. 2019. Yeah. And um, while you were going through with PrEP and then the PEP professional education program, um, tell yeah. me a little bit about this not-for-profit that you were working at. <laughs> so yeah, all the way through my uh, PEP program, I worked at the Calgary Zoo. And I had initially been taken on there by my mentor. I'd worked with him in a previous um, organization. And after my second maternity leave, he contacted me and said, will you come and help me out at the zoo? Um, they had had some, well, let's put it this way. Their accounts weren't the cleanest in the world. So I went in there. There was lots of learning out. opportunities. <laughs> there was lots of learning opportunities to do an awful lot of reconciliation, to look through their designated funds and all those kind of things and make sure that things were straight. And then that led into an opportunity where the Calgary Zoo actually created their own foundation that uh, was to further their charitable purpose of conservation. Mm. And I helped to set up and build that foundation as a separate organization for the zoo. So, Amazing. As a CPA yeah. candidate. As a CPA candidate. Yeah, it was it was really interesting. I got to see lots of different things about how to set up organizations, you know, writing a chart of accounts completely for the first time, learning about the governance structure that this was going to need. So it was a super interesting time. I was very, very lucky. Well, I'm a firm believer that work and a uh, good attitude um, and a little bit of luck contributes, but we also do a lot. We also do a lot to put ourselves in the right place. So that is a huge yeah. task. And what I want to highlight there is oftentimes like we're told, okay, it's profits or purpose, or yeah. it's, you know, oh, I can make a difference, but I have to, you know, make a living first or like we're, we're kind of stuck with this pull in this tension of yeah. saying I can't do both and um one of my secret little missions here is to call bullshit on the institution like <laughs> go go do well for you and go do well for others and and grow the pie grow the pie contribute Absolutely. do what lights you up and I think yeah. you know that's one of the reasons why why we connect and why you inspire me is because you yeah. did that and you are evidence and that is what students need to see is, you know, more and more role models of people that are doing both. Yeah, absolutely. I vividly remember from a young age being told by my parents that I would only be successful if I was truly engaged in what I was doing. Mm. And I, I just think, I think I fell into the world of nonprofit. Just, it wasn't a choice to take that job at that time, but I very quickly learned that for me personally to be doing something 
where there was a purpose that I could stand behind and really kind of just taking from people that are so invested in what they're doing made me enjoy this industry more. It really did. You know, it is, um, it's contagious when you work with people that just 100% are invested in what they're doing every single day for the cause that they're working for. I absolutely agree. Uh, I was asked a little bit back, how do you manage your time? Or what is your, how do you do work-life balance? Or how do you, uh, and my answer was a little bit like I, it, it was no and and yes. And it was, I, I focus on energy and focus on energy management um, because we can work an hour. You can have an hour meeting and it feels like a day or a week. Or sometimes you have those days where it feels like an hour or you're like, I don't want this day to end or like, you know, yeah. and how, how do I get make more time? So it's yeah. when you can work towards a goal that you believe in, um, you know, and, and work with people, like-minded people, that's amazing. And it doesn't need to be something that you have to wait until the end of your career. There's ways in which, you know, I have a number of students and they might say, well, I'm doing X job now and Y is where I want to go. So yeah. I'm like, cool, go out there and do both, you know, volunteer, be on a yeah. not-for-profit board. Um, you know, if you um, volunteer for not-for-profits, you know, get to know the board, like figure out something that you are passionate, something that lights you up um, and then figure out a way to get involved. And don't, don't, you know, don't worry about the title. Don't worry about, you know, some of the most impressive titles I've had have paid not nearly as high as you'd think and other less impressive titles have been yeah. great money makers. They're not like one for one and neither do they have a correlation to, to the goal. So, um, yeah. so that's, that's amazing. And that's the last time that we had really talked until you wrote and passed the CFI yeah. was when you were at the zoo. And then yeah. um, we reconnected and we've been talking yeah. more and more um, in this education uh, as a CPA, as you, as my colleague, um, yeah. as as such a good uh, role model. And you are, you are no longer at the zoo. Um, how about you tell me so, where you're at and what you're doing? So yeah, I now work as the director of finance and administration for Theatre Calgary, which is a theatre in Calgary, 750 seats of theatre. Um, obviously right now it's not doing too much, but yeah, generally that's what it does. So yeah, and I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm, I love the zoo, but unfortunately once the project that I was doing came to an end, it wasn't gonna give me what I needed for my practical experience requirements, quite frankly. So I had to, I had to really think about where I needed to go and where I needed to position myself to, to get that part completed. Um, and this opportunity came up, it actually came up right when I was on leave studying for my CFI. Uh, I was like, okay, put it forward. And when I went for the interview, I hadn't got my results. So I had to sell myself on the fact that hey, I get my results in January, you could potentially have a qualified accountant on your hands by January if, if you take me on. And they did. So did you, hold on, let me clarify. Did you get the job before you found out your results? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did. Yeah. How did you, so just tell me a bit more about how you how you, in your words, sold yourself, but in my mind, how did you communicate your value regardless? Because we all know that the day and moment you pass the CV, you're not any more or less smart. Um, so how did you really communicate and emphasize that? Because, um, because there is a lot of pressure based on this one moment. And sometimes it's pressure that exists. And sometimes it's pressure that we put on ourselves. So how did you stand yeah. there in your truth and communicate your strengths? I... I basically used the fact that because I had literally within weeks stepped out the CFI hall, argued that my knowledge could not be any more current when it came to um, professional accounting standards and practices around that. They seemed to like that. I was lucky that I'd had previous experience in my life and that this was, that passing the CFI was kind of 
the final piece of the puzzle in my kind of development stage. So I, I had a fair amount of experience to pull on. But yeah, it was really that look and current. I've sat it. I also think that, you know, when when you're going for some of these jobs and you're talking to another CPA that has done this, I actually interviewed with who is now uh, the chair of my audit and finance committee, and he's also a CPA. I think there's there's a lot of that kind of recognition and respect for the fact that you've just gone and sat this three day exam because they know what it's like. So I think that, that kind of helps. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the, the full package and just not waiting. Yeah. Um, also betting on yourself, right? And not waiting and believing and yeah. knowing knowing the work that you've done, regardless of, you know, what and what an output may be. So I really, that's wonderful. And what I kind of yeah. like too, as much as it kind of makes me here you know, a little bit bummed that you weren't able to get all of your practical experience at one place. I think it's a, yeah. it's a good example for people to say, okay, because they might be looking, oh, I don't want to take this one job because I won't get my entire 30 months. But listen, take it if it's what you want. It gets yeah. you on your path. Um, it may grow and it may become a role that does qualify. Or yeah. like in your case, it's not the end of the world um, if it doesn't. And you'll you'll make it work. Part of being a CPA and a CPA articling student is, or candidate, pardon me, um, is just figuring it out and making it work. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Um, and I had worked with, with my supervisor at the zoo and I was uh I don't think I was lucky I think you know most good supervisors will help you do this so I, I had showed him the practical experience requirements and he had given me the opportunities that were available within that organization that I could write about and and submit and it just came to the point where there wasn't going to be any more that I could do so at some point I was either going to have to it would have been great if I could have moved in the organization and moved into a different role and filled it, but that just wasn't the case at that time. So, you know, I had to I had to think about the fact that ultimately I have to fill these boxes. So that means I have to go and find somewhere to, to fill these boxes. Yeah, and it's not the end of the world and you're here and no. you're thriving and you've filled the boxes. And in fact, it goes full circle because um, what, like what, how does it come full circle? Maybe I'll lead with that. How do you think it comes full circle in the sense um, with practical experience and uh, the CPA program? So, so I think you're right. It actually, it, it, it always works out. It does work out. I've been like hugely lucky in the role that I've taken. And probably if you'd have asked me in the first couple of months, I wouldn't have thought I was too lucky. I walked into a finance department as a newly newly qualified CPA that needed an awful lot of work, an awful lot of work that I wasn't prepared for. I tell you, it taught me some questions to ask in interviews going forward. It really did. Um, but, you know, when you start to roll up your sleeves, I've had the opportunity to rebuild my own finance department from the ground up. We've implemented new systems. We've done yes. internal controls and it's been fantastic and i re this is where it goes full circle because i recently employed a senior accountant who is now on the cpa program and is trying to get his professional experience in my organization in my finance department which is fantastic like i i just love that i can help him with this absolutely absolutely yeah yeah and th they're going through and he's doing the experience yeah. verification and so you know, I, one of my goals um, is to always just make it a little bit better for those who come after us, right? So how do we reduce Absolutely. a little bit of the friction? And I can't imagine a better person for, for, your, for your candidate, for your employee than to have you in their corner to, to see the future and to help guide them there. So that's pretty incredible. Yeah, and yeah, I agree. And I look, I look forward to helping him with it. So he takes his CP this year. So I've done the same thing. I've paid it forward. I've taken it someone on to my senior accountant that's going to sit their CP this year. He's already asking me what Capstone 2 is like. I'm, like I'm, not sure. I'm not sure if I want to tell you what Capstone 2 is like. <laughs> <laughs> is he writing I, in, in May? <laughs> or is yeah, he writing in September? He's writing in May. So he's literally just finished oh. his Capstone 1. Yeah. yeah, give him the week, maybe. <laughs> and then <laughs> and what was what was great, you know, he came to work for me and I'm said, So 
so, so what's your thoughts for like time off for study? He's like, I don't, I don't know if I'll uh, if I'll need that much. I, I just said, well, we can revisit that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll revisit. Yeah, after that initial weekend, there may be some <laughs> revisiting. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I so you know, it's great like to help him through that, and you know, to help him you know, find those examples because he's now with me in this finance department that we run like the whole thing it's 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 as kind of I mean I they, it can tick every box if you want it to obviously we do audits every year we got internal controls we have an endowment so you can do treasury management through the endowment as well so yeah what we will work together on what boxes he wants to tick and get him through the experience verification as well perfect um interesting so i mean now that you are where you are at and you are you know growing others in addition um to your own role what future plans or like what kind of things are you considering now it's funny because it's all still a bit surreal like i know i took my cv in as you said 2019 and then I actually managed to complete the professional experience requirements pretty quickly afterwards, but because of COVID, it took a while to get them all verified. And I literally got my certificate through the post about a month ago. Like my <laughs> final certificate. Like, I got the notification, I got the email and the notification and everything that said that I could, you know, yeah, be a no, I'd be printing and all that. that I'd be framing it. <laughs> like, yeah. Until. It took months for this certificate to come through and it all of a sudden came through the post and it, it, it was pretty surreal because I know it felt like a long time and it doesn't really feel like it, it still feels surreal that I've done it all and I you talk about time management and I used to think my life was so full and it was going to be wonderful when I didn't have to study anymore and now I find myself hankering for learning again because it's what makes us grow and when you step away from it and you looked at it, I personally realized how much I enjoyed that and how much I enjoyed the growth of it. And and I did enjoy the program. So there may be some more learning. I also, you know, I would really like to look at the aspect of maybe teaching this. As I've said, my world of accounting is a little bit of a giving back world and I can't think of a better way to, to help that. Um, my new Shini accountant has kind of reignited that fire into maybe teaching, teaching accounting, teaching for CPA. It's something that I'd like to look in, look into. You are an amazing teacher, and I think that using, utilizing your teaching talents in a number of different ways will be fantastic. And I know that we are going to have a separate talk about that, but it is. Yeah, we need. Um, we need more colleagues like like Claire. So um, I'm just going to, yeah. instead of wrapping up with this, I'm going to put this here. Um, if our students, the third and fourth year Dallas students, if they want to reach out, are they able to do that via LinkedIn? Can I link it in our talk? Absolutely. Absolutely. More than happy. Yeah, please do reach out. I can send you my email. We can chat. We can, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no better kind of uh, way to kind of continue honing the craft is to answer questions and, and talk and discover yeah. and see what are people interested in. Um, and it's, it's no matter how long I've been doing this or how, like how, when I first started, I'm just, it's always surprising. And it's always just so neat. Like what are people struggling with or what are they confused with or what do they want to know from us? So it's, yeah, yeah. please, please reach out to Claire. She wants to hear from you. Absolutely. And I like the program, like if you have faith in the program, it is so good. And I and I don't think you can see that until you step away from it and look back at it. it it's a fantastic program. Absolutely. No, I, I can <laughs> echo that with my own uh, yeah. experience too. And But now like being out of it, or especially the first few years, I could like link back. And even now I'm like, oh, like this is what helped me. Or this is, I felt like sometimes people were doing things to me during it. Or I'm like, why? Or like, it feels like a lot. And now I'm like, oh, thank yeah. gosh. Thank gosh. Yeah. Like um, that, that was there because now I have these lessons from it. Yeah. All right. So um, just in a general way, then um, if you're speaking to third and fourth year Dow accounting majors, 
who maybe they're on yeah. the fence. Maybe they're like, maybe I want to be a CPA. Maybe I don't. Or maybe they yeah. um, are just saying, Claire, what is your advice for me? What would you say? I would say, and I think you've kind of already mentioned this. Uh, one of the big pieces of advice I would give is maybe trying to get some volunteering experience and work experience. You know me as as a finance director in a nonprofit. Um, I'm more than happy and looking for people that I can bring into my finance department and volunteer with me and show them how it works. One of the big things I found when I was at university and everything was so theoretical, I don't think I could really get the whole picture and how everything linked together until I saw it in practice. So I think that work experience part and seeing how everything links together and what that big picture looks like is super useful. Absolutely. Um, and I would also say, you know, to find, find the industry that you're passionate about and that you're interested in. It's not always just about accounting. It's about what you're accounting for. Yes, uh, absolutely. No, every, yeah. I can't think of an industry that doesn't need accountants, right? Like it's, no. so yeah, figure out what lights you up and then grow your, yeah. you know, contribute in that way. Yeah. Because you can get you can get to work in some really cool and indus interesting industries as an accountant. Absolutely, uh, I always mm. say that it's like the Swiss Army knife. It's you know it, one of the reasons why it's challenging and why it's demanding um, is because it's also valuable, and you can use that value to empower yourself to say, okay, that's cool. Um, I want to work there. I want to contribute to this, and and then go and do that with your skill set and. Even if you only work, say, in, I don't know, um, just going to pick something crazy, um, popcorn industry, and you become a popcorn industry expert, um, it doesn't mean that if you go to the next popcorn industry or po next popcorn company, you still have to learn how that company does something. So it's not like Absolutely. if you stay in the same industry, you're keeping it safe. No, like nope. every company is different. So if you, you know, learn and grow and challenge yourself, you have that skill set, you have that tool set to go out and, and figure things out. And, and absolutely believe in yourself, believe in yourself. Like Claire, I, that is, um, I'm so happy that you have shared all, all of these stories. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like to end these items with asking my guests, um, how do you define success? What is your definition of success? Okay. So my definition of, of success. I think for me, the moment I felt successful was when I gained the confidence really that, that came with doing this program and passing the modules and getting on and, and achieving it and ultimately passing that CV and ultimately getting that, that certificate through, through the door. I, um, I remember someone not too far away in this conversation saying it to me in call one, there will be a time when you'll just know things and you'll answer questions and you'll be like, whoa, where did that come from? It's all in there. And it's true, it, it is all in there. And once you start to realize that it's in there and you know what you're talking about and you have the confidence in what you're talking about, then I think you start to feel successful in whatever industry or role you're in, because your opinions and your point of view on things matter because you have the confidence to stand behind them. Fantastic. Final comments, anything to add, Claire? Um, anything to add? I can't think of anything to add, not right at this moment. No, it's um we've it's covered a I lot. Say, yeah, it is something that I 100 percent have no regrets on doing at all. Perfect. People said that it would open doors and it did. So it's it's been fantastic. Can't think of any other way how I'd want to wrap up. Part one no. with Claire. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. No problem at all.